information is for entertainment purposes only. Oh, they're, they're confused. What a noise. What a horrible noise. Wheels off. You can see the two jacks. That's the safety one in particular. Because that's on the chassis. This one could slip. And that one will limit the damage. Right, the new part. Excuse me. We have a brand new bearing. We'll double check to make sure it matches the one we take off before we start dismantling too much. Uh, this is the little kit that came with it. So you got the four pins. They're great because they're nice torque, wide torques heads on them. This is a replacement castellated uh, washer. Although that one's good. This is the pin I'm going to take out. I've already loosened that, so I'm going to take that out anyway. Pull that out. And a replacement pin to go back in. So they're great. Replacement nut as well, but I don't think it's that necessary. But you always good practice to replace it. But there's no locking mechanism on that. First job, take this off, the caliper. Uh, we'll take this, these two off first. Take this, I'm not going to video all this, okay? But we're going to take these two off first. Suspend that. Um, just to prevent the strain on this hose. And then we'll take this one off. And then once we get through there, I know they're different, they're smaller than this, and that's why I don't like them. That's the existing ones are smaller than this, and that's why I've had problems with um, the torque involved. See, and you can see how it snapped the torques head of that one. And that's because they're, they're just too small for the torque that's involved. Caliper off, wheel nut that holds the bearing off. We'll go through these holes here, align with the Torx bolts that hold the bearing on. And then, we'll then, oh, we do need to take those off because we need to use the threads in there to pull that off. Here's the track right end. I've got a special clampy spanner, but you need to connect to that nut and then you need to, there's another hexagon on here, you know, it's, I haven't got a, something that will grab it better than this. And then you just open them until, see that, that loosens just a little bit, then put it back a tiny bit until it just catches. Turn the shaft, hopefully, hopefully not turns with it which it does well you keep on doing that until this pops out that means that when you put it back together it goes pretty much in the same place it, it goes within a you know a, a fraction of the a turn of a thread which is pretty accurate and shouldn't upset your tracking too much so i've got to the point where i'm just about to take this off this caliper these bolts are loosened but I haven't taken out yet. There they are. Put them safely. Now I could just pull this off. The problem with that is that these pads are quite tight on the disc. And there's a lip here actually from wear. So it will take a while to get it off. But once it's off, I, I, I've got the problem if, they, if they're too tight taking them off, then they're going to be quite tight putting them back on. And that's when they all start to fall apart. But the best thing you can do is get yourself a lever or a screwdriver or something. And, well, the easy way is you just get in the pad in the caliper like that. And I'm exerting pressure now. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see it? I don't know whether you can. Okay. But, but it, went, it went loose. See how it's loose now? It went loose because... If I take that off... When I tilted this caliper, it forced these pistons in. And that means now that there's clearance. If I'm careful, I don't need to touch those at all. I can just pull those pads out just a little bit just to get out. And I can leave them in position. Because I don't want to 
keep messing with things. So that'll do it. I'm ready with my piece of cable off the top of the suspension leg spring, which I'll put somewhere, perhaps to that hole there. See? Get high so it's out of my way, but not straining that uh, rubber hose. That's what this is all about. It's so uh, that that hose, see it, is not being pulled from the weight of this caliper. And this one, I've got to take those bolts off there now. One there, one at the top, bottom, one at the top. Make sure the spanners fit, like we've said a few times. There's a little bit of space there now, look. I can move them a little bit. If I move them too much, they'll pop out and I'll have to, I'll have these little springs to contend with and whatever. So that's it. First, say it's rounded off there. You can see, if you try to put the span on that, sometimes if it's, it's worn a little bit, like that's an 18 mil and there's a bit of wobble, but you see it just turns. So sometimes you can get a smaller spanner and bang it on and make it really tight, like an old fashioned Whitworth or something. And it works now. See, that's got a great grip. I'll give it a Oh, sorry, don't want to drop my, my caliper. Oh. Okay, now I'll just put a tube on there so I don't have to keep jolting it. Oh, it's going to slip off. If it slips off, I'm shooting. Now I've got a 36 mil. It's a bit loose. I don't think I have a tighter one. Probably do. Do I? It always pays. The question to ask yourself is, if I damage that, would I be able to get it off? And because it's recessed in a hole, the answer is, I'd struggle. Right, this one's tight. Now is it too tight? No, it's actually lovely. See this? One and sorry. Yeah, one and three eighth. See that? That's what you want. It fits like a like a dream. Okay. I had to redo the sound on this part because YouTube picked up on some music in the background. So here I'm, I'm removing the, the nut which secures the drive shaft. I know that I'm using a, an inch and three eighths socket instead of the, the normal metric socket because it fitted better. It's so important to get the right fitting socket. Even if it isn't the correct one for that nut. If it fits tighter, it's better. Because if you round off a nut, it can be very difficult to get off. Your lips move, but I can hear what they're singing in. And I have become comfortably numb. Now theoretically, I should be able to pull that uh, wishbone arm out of its rubber joints and, and get enough clearance. This, this arm should actually flex quite a bit and I should get enough clearance to drop the drive shaft out, hopefully. Okay, I have to get a lever in, give it a hand. Fucking nothing straightforward, is it? There you go. Okay, so there's the arm, you can see it. Drop down. That's the wash off the bearing at the end of the drive shaft. 
Now, there's a bit of movement on that side, on the proximal side of the drive shaft. Um, I don't want that. I want to use this. So I can get just a little lever in there. So that's, there you go, look, see? Watch your fingers. Okay, it's a bit tight, it's not quite got the three. Right. There you go. One drive shaft. easy in the end. So, okay. so there's the drive shaft. I'm doing all those and getting them out and replacing them and then I can be sure that they're, they're going to be tight. Oh that's loose. That's loose. That one I took out, isn't, isn't it? Yeah, that one. Ooh, that one I didn't. No, that's loose. That's grand. That's not going to come out either. Another Torx cap heads are loose, but trying to get them out, you can't get them out. If you grab them like that, I can't get the hole in. So what I'm going to do is grab them like that and open these to exert an external pressure. See? So even that is hard to do until you've got the right tool. See? Yep. That one. Yep. Great, isn't it? Once you set up, basically, look at that. Can you see it? Yeah. So the, the disc bolts to the hub with some bolts, obviously, and those are those. And then in between, there are these holes that allow me to take, unbolt these, this bearing from the bottom of the suspension leg. We need to take these bolts out. We don't want to uh, round the, the heads off. This is a 13 mil. I don't think you can see that. There's a tiny bit of turn, a little bit of play. If they weren't so vital, you would probably manage that. Now it pays to try another 13 mil socket. Socket. Once again, tiny weeny bit of movement. Now, a half inch is 12.7, so that 0.3 makes all the difference. And you can see I can't quite get it on. So that's as good as it gets. So what we'll do, is we'll hammer that on. And you heard the different sound, so that means it's actually home. Hey, oh, that was great. Hopefully they'll all be like that. I've had these off before though, but I always worry about getting in a pickle with them. Yeah, can't quite get the socket off. Oh, can. It's coming. There you go. There's the socket off. 
So we can go on to the next one. We can pull them all off with the the, uh, the wrench later, the electric wrench. Grand. I got these off a. Of, what did I get these off? I got these off a of Corsa, off the some aluminium brackets on the front of the engine there that holds the alternator and things like that. The Torx heads, but a spanner fits those. This is an M10, standard M10 thread, and it's about 75mm long. And I know that these are high tensile, which means they're not going to strip and cause me problems. We've got our bolts in place. We're now going to tighten up a bit. One bit at a time. See you coming. There it is. One bearing off. Can you see it? And if you look, when you do the bolts, you've got to make sure that you line them up. And you can see, the one's caught there, the other one's just caught on that bridge. You could have done with being turned a bit. The problem with turning a bit is that this one would have been further out as well, so that's probably a good compromise. This one was only assisting, anyway, these were the main two. That's it. Job done. Job's a good one. Great example of a knackered bearing. There's no, there's no real play in it. But listen. Imagine that on your car. Without using hydraulic equipment, I can think of at least four methods for removing a bearing from the shaft of the hub. The first is to push it off using high tensile bolts passed through the brake disc as we did last time to remove the bearing from the housing in the suspension leg. The second is to pull it off with a three-legged puller. The third is to push it off using a concoction of threaded parts, both male and female, plus washers, etc. And fourth is to partially cut off the bearing using an angle grinder and then to entice it off the shaft using a combination of twisting it with a big adjustable spanner or pipe wrench or hammering and chiseling it off because the bearing is brittle and will snap on shock loads. Let's try the first method, pushing off the bearing using bolts through the brake disc. What we need to do, to take these bolts out, but we're going to use those bolts to push this off that, so that the bearing comes off like that. And we're left with this shaft on which to put the new bearing. The challenge, the challenge is when you're passing, which way is it, that way, when you're passing the bolts through, the threads on the brake disc, they'll hit about there, and you don't want that to slip off like that, because it'll damage the bolts, and then you, you might get a bit stuck. What I didn't want to happen, happened. Method one failed on this occasion. Let's try method two, pulling off the bearing using a three-legged puller. Here we pull off the inner race of the bearing, which is more difficult than pulling off the complete bearing because there's less grip. The three-legged puller has to be the preferred method. It's quick and it works with no damage to the shaft. Once you have a bearing puller, as you'll see, 
it can be used to put the bearing back on the shaft on to our third method of removing the bearing from the shaft using concocted male and female threaded parts and washers etc this may include parts of an old two-legged puller i'm looking at three different threads the idea being that i'll use one of them to both remove the bearing from the shaft and also to add the new bearing to the shaft which one do i use let's just assume they're all long enough but there's a few considerations my basic principle is this i'd rather use high tensile steel than mild steel second i'd rather use the greatest diameter than the smallest diameter and then the third one is i'd rather use a finer thread than a more coarse thread this one is mild steel these i'm not sure but because they're parts of well that's actually a complete one a, a proper puller you'd expect them to be hardened steel a high carbon steel that one is a th slightly bigger diameter than that one that one is a slightly finer thread than that one so i'd be torn between this and that and i'd probably go because there's not much between the diameters i'd go for the fine thread so that's the one i'd use so i'm going to try and pull it it's not going to come apart in one but i thought i'd show you this bit no, i don't quite know how this is going to turn out i suspect the inner races are going to be left on <laughs> oh you can hear it pinging Watch my eyes, I think. I don't know. Oh, yeah, there's some bearings. I'll have a little look. Oh, what's going on? Ah, okay. I think, uh, I'm going to be left with both inner races on the shaft. That's what I think. Got to come off with minimal damage to the shaft. Oh no, the outer race is coming off. I think. Or oh, partly off. Okay. No, this is the second one. I thought, well, while I got the t tools together, I'll um, see if I can take this one apart. This one might be easier. And I haven't got much battery, so I'm probably going to run out. Oh, you're looking for that seat there. This one is easier. See, this is how it should be. I'll probably still leave the inner race the distal in a race there but that's a standard sort of problem point is it, it's a lot easier than the other one you saw the mess i had to make of that i've got not got much battery though so it might run out yes yeah, left the in a race the other one left both races There you go. What do you think? Whenever a bearing race is left on the shaft of the hub, we now need to either use a three-leg puller, as we've seen works well, or the angle grinder method, which is still to come. For somebody who's good with an angle grinder, with a cutting disc or a grinding disc, who's also good with a vise, a hammer, a chisel, and a tool to twist parts, such as pipe grips or adjustable spanners this is the tried and tested method to get the bearing off the shaft without damaging the shaft because i've done the grooves at an angle it allows me to put it in the vise and give that a smack 
which helps to crack it. If, if it gets really difficult, I'll do some more cuts to the other side and that, that will uh, weaken it. Because it's a very brittle steel and if you smack it hard enough, it should crack. I'm now trying to get the in the race off. You can see I've cut some grooves. They haven't quite hit the shaft, which is good. If they hit the shaft a little bit, it's not the end of the world. It's just to be avoided. But you have to get right, hang on. You have to get right up to this corner here, up to that edge. Yeah, so you sort of, you're cutting an angle like that for there, and then you cut it out away from that for the rest of it. Now I'll show you the other side, because the other side is quite interesting, because I've started hammering it. And it makes the point of, that, I'm trying to find what I hammered it with, here you go. A chisel's perfect. I found a chisel now, but initially I just grabbed this, which is like a, a key, a spanner for, for an angle grinder. And I, I then sort of just put that in the groove and smacked it. And you can see that it, it's kind of steel because it's so brittle. If you get it right, it'll snap. So I'm, I'm going to cut up that corner now. So this whole side is weak. Now I'm going to turn it over. I might just smack it then, actually, see what happens. I'll do it now. I'll do it now. Who knows what will happen? Using the main part of your puller or your other concocted male and female threaded parts to put the new bearing onto the undamaged hub shaft. I'm talking about, we're only catching the contact here and there. If we had a big washer, it would transfer the load onto these edges as well. And that's the you have to think about the forces. I because we're quite a long distance as well. The beauty is that. It'll start pulling it quite evenly, which is lovely. Um, so I'm going to start looking for a washer. I don't know whether I'll find one. And I've got the this hub, the hub I'm going to use. I've got that in the freezer at the minute because freezing will contract it, give us a little bit more clearance um, between the bore of this inner race, or well, there's two inner races and the shaft of this the bearing surface of, of this hub the other thing to bear in mind which i probably haven't explained but i'll quickly explain it now is that we could just push the load down on here now that's probably i don't know whether to do that with a with the proper set up with a press or something but i don't know but you don't really what you want to do is be putting the load on the inner race now that's not perfect now i've actually got a bit of space now so i might no i can't turn that around you see i haven't got enough space there to turn that around because the idea initially was to get this on that bearing surface that inner race a bit more anyway the idea is that you put the pressure on the inner race because if you put the pressure on the outer race there's a that you're actually damaging the bearing because you're forcing that one's all right because that inner race is being forced against its tapered bearings, but these t tapered roller bearings come in the opposite direction. So you you're actually straining this here and you're damaging the surface. You're damaging the seals. You're probably shortening the life of the bearing in that in that way. I hope that makes sense. If you've got bearings like that, and you're pushing on the outside down, and the shaft of this. Is pushing on the inner race up your, your part and company even if you've got a, something covering both surfaces there is that tendency for to for any clearance between this and that to be filled with that and you're damaging it so you want to get your pre downward pressure on the inner race here's our hub nicely chilled hopefully Let's go like that. So what we'll do, I don't need to warm up too much. That's not bad. And then, it took that. six minutes to press the bearing onto the shaft of the hub until it was seated correctly.
the whole job cost me about 23 euro per bearing that's 46 euro plus my time you could probably do this in a day once you've done it before and you've got set up and i estimate it would have cost me about six to eight hundred euro by using a repair shop so i think it was really well worth it The van is now just so smooth and quiet.